Today we're making a loom knit bath mat out of t-shirt yarn here on Good Knit Kisses. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. Today we're making a loom knit bath mat out of t-shirt yarn. You can outsource it yourself online or you can make it yourself. Be sure and click on the link in the description below in order to make it yourself um, or to get the pattern with all the details on supplies that you need. So 195 yards is what you'll need for this project. It's about a 14 inch by 22 inch size bath mat. It's nice and squishy, squishy and thick and uh, it's really great to sink your toes into after the shower. It's like a little massage on your feet. For the loom, you're just gonna need one. I'm showing a variety here. We've got a boy uh, 62 peg long loom, and uh, you need the front and back rails like this. Uh, you can also use the Nifty Knitter or Old Provocraft, also loops and threads, and um, the Hobby Lobby looms would work as well, as long as they are 11 16th spacing on the front and you will need your loom pick. You're gonna want a nice strong one because the t-shirt yarn is nice and strong. If you do have a loom that the pegs come out easily, you'll want to make sure that those are secure before you begin because uh, the t-shirt yarn can be a bit strong on it. You can cut a bit of t-shirt yarn and put it in the hole and then push down on it and it will friction fit it together really well. All right, let's begin on casting on. We will do the stitch, also the stretchy bind off to match the edges and weave in the tails. All right, pause your video, get your materials and I'll see you soon. We're gonna begin by making a slip knot. Make it however you like. I wrap mine over my finger Put the back loop over the front loop and do it one more time up and over the tip of your finger and then place the tail on the inside and we're going to put it on this very first peg right here. I'm going to double E wrap cast on by wrapping peg two twice. So one, two and lift up and over to get that secured on there. And then we're going to do that on the next two pegs. And after we have these first four done, we're gonna go back to the third peg in. So skip the first two pegs and we're going to E-wrap, uh, cast on these three pegs here. So we're gonna do these two twice, or this peg twice. Pull it tight. It's a little odd for that first one across. Double E-wrap the next one. And double E wrap this last one here. And then we're going to work our way to the front rail. So we just did the back rail. We're going to go to the next stitch here. So we're creating a pattern. We're going to be going back and forth in sets of three. So the beginning is going to have four as well as at the end. So you're just going to keep going down wrapping. Now the way that we're doing it here is the exact way that you're going to repeat it on your way back except we won't be double E wrapping on the way back. We'll just be wrapping it one time and lifting up and over with the loop that's already on the peg. All right so after we do those three you got it. You're going to go right back to the back here and double E wrap and continue. So in my pattern, I'm doing 56 pegs casting on, which means that the last four pegs where we're gonna end are gonna be all the way down at the end. These last four pegs are going to be worked just how these ones are uh, in order to get the design the way I have it. There's some extra notes if you wanna make something uh, wider or something uh, more narrow and have it to where it doesn't have this little um, slipped edge on it. This little slipped edge allows you to make two panels and stitch them together to make it wider. Um, otherwise, you can get this look here by making the four pegs on just the front rail only. So whenever you finish down here, you're going to have four pegs here, go back and forth, back and forth, and then you'll end with four pegs here instead of going to the back and making four pegs here. You'll see in just a moment um, where I'm ending this one, but it'll be back here uh, to do the, um, the one that I made uh, just like this one. All right, I think it looks really pretty like that and I don't mind this extra little braided detail edge. 
All right, pause your video and I'll see you back up at the end to show you how to finish wrapping. See you in a moment. Once you've finished out your pattern, you have the four pegs at the end and our panel will be a slipped panel. It'll be a slip stitch flat panel. So that means that the first stitch will always get slipped. That means you don't work it. So all you do is simply start with the second peg and wrap it one time and then go on to the next peg and you wrap one time and continue on all the way down the line. And then when you're ready, you will knit them all off. So you're gonna take the bottom loop over the top loop and knit them off that way and lock in the new stitch and you just continue going back and forth until you've reached the desired length. We're going to speed up and go on to the next step where you can see all the knitting as it comes across and you'll see what this looks like. All right, pause your video, work on your project and I'll see you in a moment. And this is what that pattern looks like when it is all knit up into the length that we want. You can see I've kind of doubled that over here. And you can see it's nice and stretched out at the loom here, but the true width is going to be down at the beginning. And it's got that nice stretchy cast on we had, and you want to bind off with the stretchy bind off. So you want to pause your video and continue knitting. Just so you know about how much I used, I did about 72 rows, which is about 22 inches and you can stop when you've got about five yards left if you don't have a measuring tape um, eyeball the length that you um, that you want to knit stop when you have about five yards left which is wrapping around these pegs just like you did back and then forth so wrapping them twice so that you can get enough length here all right so we're going to begin on the next part with the stretchy bind off pause your video and continue knitting until you're ready see you in a moment for the stretchy bind off on this particular panel, it will have the same repeat throughout, except on the very end, we are going to treat these last few stitches different than you may have seen before. So stay tuned for that part. So let's begin on our bind off by knitting the second peg. So you just E-wrap that and knit off. And then move the second peg to the first peg and knit that off. And then you're gonna to want to E-wrap peg one and knit off. And now you can move that to the empty peg. And you bound off one peg. We're gonna repeat that on the remaining ones on this little set here. So E-wrap peg two, knit it off, move it over to the left, knit it off, Work the stitch one more time, and that gives it the stretch. So E wrap again, and then move it. And repeating, E wrap, peg two, knit that off, move it over, knit it off, and then E wrap again. And that way that peg, each stitch gets worked twice and that's what builds the stretch into your panel. You can see that the width of this is still gonna be the width of one of these triple rib stitch areas here. And now we want to move across. Now you don't have to move this over, uh, it's, it's redundant. You don't need to actually move it to this empty peg here because it's right across the way. So we want to E-wrap that next peg on the back side because it's in the same sequential order. We're still going in order as we did before. So we're just gonna work that, knit it off. You're still moving the two to the one because your numbers just keep shrinking down here. So we're just gonna keep calling them a two and a one or one and a two. So knit it off, work the stitch again with an E-wrap. And now you can move this one over to the other side to make it easier. Okay, and then now we still work with uh, working our next stitch over. We work the two, move it to the one. And I think you get the idea. Knit that off. Okay. And E-wrap again. Okay. 
and move the stitch over. Okay, so it's going to make it uh, nice and stretchy. It will follow the same pattern as here. I want you to go ahead and work all your stitches down until you get to the last three stitches. Pause your video and I'll see you soon. All right, I'm on the last four stitches. Really, it's the last three we're worried about, but I want you to see that I'm, I'm doing the last four in this set that finishes out that last rib stitch with the slip stitch on the back. And we want to um, go to our two peg and knit that off. So we e wrapped and move it just as we normally do. And knit this one off. And go ahead and e wrap knit again. And then we move it. And before we do anything else, I want you to pick up this middle peg here. So we have three left. Pick up the middle peg. All right. And now pick up the end peg and move it uh, to where you just lifted off that stitch. And now replace the stitch on there. So we have two over one. And we're just going to knit the bottom over the top. Now we only have two pegs left. And now you're going to work this peg here as your two peg, just as you did before. E wrap knit it off, pick it up and move it over, knit that off, and now we want to e-wrap that again. That's the last time. Okay, and now this loop here that's left, you can just pull it out a bit, give yourself enough for a tail, take your scissors and trim it off and pull that loop all the way through and you can now take it fully off the loom and now you've got a tail that needs to be woven in let's weave that in together okay we're going to use a tapestry needle to weave in our tails you can use a crochet hook but I prefer the tapestry needle so we're going to thread that on make sure it's a nice wide eye that you can get your strand through and you see where my knot was. I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that's nice and tight. And I'm going to go where this, you see where this is kind of bumped out a little bit. This is where my last knot is. And I'm going to go into this first slip stitch here and pull down. And then that's going to pull my tail in nicely and it finishes off that edge detail. And then I can come up through one of these loops here, come around and follow the pattern. Oops. And then pull that on through. I'm going to pull that through. Okay, and so we're just going to go and follow these stitches up and around here. So I'm just going to pick a spot, make sure I'm all the way through that loop and come down. I want to try and get it all the way up to here. Okay. All right, now when I'm um, up to this area where this this purl section is I can start following the pearls down and so I want to go around where the we have these what we call like an umbrella and then this is a smile here so I want to go down and follow this little uh, smile here so I'm going to go down underneath this loop here and then follow this around this little smile and go up and it, what it does is it um, follows the pattern. Let's see, make sure I'm getting a full loop. The, the harder part with weaving in the tails on this uh, t-shirt yarn is because you want to make sure you go through the entire loop. So I may have to kind of mess with that stitch a bit. There we go. Now I found it. There we go. Now, when I go around it, you see how it laps over that other stitch and you really can't see it so you want to kind of play around with this this is a good one to do if you're at a craft meetup or something and then you can do all your tails while you just sit there instead of doing something a little more difficult so i just like to go and find those little smiles and umbrellas and uh, find my way around the yarn here and um, get it stitched in nicely. Then you're just going to, once you've got a few inches in, then you're just gonna clip that off with your scissors and do that on the other side. 
This is 100% machine washable. It's going to be really durable. You can have a separate rug hold that goes underneath it, and then you can just um, remove that, and they're, they're separate, but it keeps it together really well. So you wanna um, remove it before you wash. You can um, cut it back about an inch uh, around, so an inch smaller on all sides, and then that way you won't see it from the top side. There's also spray adhesive and things like that you can use for rug holds, but I don't like that because I don't think they're as washable um, for a, a, an extended period of time like this one is. I hope you enjoy making your bath mat with the nice squishy edges and getting your toes all in there. I really enjoyed making mine. I can't wait to use it. And if you enjoy this video, be sure and click on the comments below and let us know what you liked about it. Did you make your own t-shirt yarn or did you buy some? Let us know where you got it. I'm sure it would help your fellow community member below. I'm so glad that you joined us today. Be sure and subscribe if you haven't. I hope you have a great day and happy knit and crochet. Bye-bye.